Hi friends, you are with me and Radha from learningmilestone.com and in this series we are creating useful tkinter applications while we are learning the concepts as well along the way. This is the third lecture in our series where we are creating to do application and let's first see how it works before we even dive into what concepts we will be learning from it. So I'll be first showing you how the script would work once it is created. So once I run it, it opens a to do application which has a title and a image logo image. And then there are different areas. One is input area where we can input the name of the task. Let's say I add run and I can add item. I say eat and I can add item. Now in the center we have a task list which gets appended as and when we click on add item button and then at the bottom we have uh, four different buttons to take action on these tasks let's say if i want to remove this eat i'll just select this eat and remove item and uh, let's say i add uh, some more study let's say okay and uh, if i click on clear it will clear everything similarly if uh, i have this again eat run sleep and uh, fun movie eat again okay one more eat again so you can see there is a scroll bar appearing over here if the list exceeds the length of the task list height of the task list and then we can also save the list if i click on save list nothing will happen in the foreground but let's just quit the application and see wherever is my directory right now um, a checklist.txt is created and you can see the uh, task appearing and say they got saved in the text list so and there is also one logo.png which we already saw on this application so what eventually we will be learning while creating this application definitely we will be going through layout parts take inter and grid functionality we will be adding two more uh, widgets this time this is one is this list box and the other bar other is scroll scroll bar and we'll be attaching them to each other um, the other part which we'll be doing is we'll be learning how to add image on a tkinter application using canvas widget okay apart from that in terms of functionality we'll be interacting with the text file in terms of open, uh, reading from text file and saving data in text file so that's all we'll be doing the, in this application so i'm very excited to go ahead so let's get started with the script all right so guys to start with this application i'll be starting with a basic template of create by adding comments so that we can know where to add what right so so first of all we need to import our packages right then we have to create our main window and then we need to have variable section like color and anything else then we need to create functions which will be called when the button is clicked or something happens okay and then we have to create of course layout using tkinter and finally we'll be running the main loop so that we can run main window and listen to different events so to start with we'll be importing tkinter and we'll be creating our main window root is equal to tkinter dot tk we'll coming back we'll come back to this then we have to run the main loop right root dot main loop and let's run this so we have this simple window uh, before we proceed further let's also avail the image which we'll be adding uh, in this section to avail the image you can go to this awesome website flaticon.com which has 
many free images available and if I click on the search bar and enter my relevant search criteria I can get my list right so let's say I go on this and I click on this uh, whatever you want PNG or SVG so let's say I want PNG and you can select the size as well so let's say I selected PNG right so either you can have premium subscription or you can have free down download but when you are having free download you definitely need to give attribution and if you click on attribute required it tells you the way you can give attribution to the author okay and uh, once you know and you know how to give attribute go to free download and you can download it now once you have uh, this image what you can do you can go to this directory where you have web uh, where you have main script and then you can paste your image in this directory so you have your image ready so let's go back to what we were doing so we will continue and resume from root where we need to give title to our root window root dot title and uh, it's a to do list now the other thing which we can also give to the root window is something called geometry okay so geometry decides the initial size at which the decanter window will be open and we would love to have a particular size because the way we want to show our application let's say i want my application to open in this way this kind of height and this kind of width where width can be smaller than height right and these height and width are in pixels so let's try something so if i give let's say 250 which is width cross okay this is small x by let's say 400 where it leads to something like this right and we can stretch it and uh, and we can stretch it in both the direction so let's make it slightly bigger and we can always adjust once our application is ready so something like this okay and let let's let's stick to this and then we can readjust it later now the other thing which which we have to do over here is uh, we can have some root color okay so in variable i can define root color but from either so far we have been adding this uh, color name over here right you can search on internet for the colors or otherwise there is a site called colorhunt.co where you can search for your color palette and uh, let's say i search for yellow you can have a color palette associated with yellow so suppose you choose this it gives you color in hex code you can also look for the name of this color or rgb code okay over here not every color will have name so let's say you copied the hex code add hash and paste that code over here so when you give uh, create your main window let's say i configure my window again over here configure window again and uh, so to configure this window root dot config and i can add bg is equal to root color over here so we'll be creating such variables related to font and other button color so that we can have standardized color across and style across our application let's proceed further so we'll just be ignoring this create function for now and we'll come back to it let's directly move to create layout so let's have a closer look at this application so far we just placed the widgets on the root directly right because there were not so so many elements now if we look at this application we can clearly see this application has parts right one is where we have some title displayed and logo displayed right kind of branding area and the other part is where we can add the task right we have input area right and then we have some middle area which is displaying the task so let's say let's call it output area and the third 
part is where we have all the buttons to manage these tasks or window so let's say let's call it a manage area so basically we can see that this window is divided into different functionalities and we can we tend to have some kind of section management for these and that can be done with the help of frames so frame is basically a parent to these common elements which we can club inside a frame and place within that frame with frame being uh, as a parent or master window to these widgets okay so let's understand what i mean by creating the frames to create frames we'll go to layout section and make use of um, widget frame from tkinter and uh, we need four frames right four parts for the application and hence we need four frames so let's make them one by one so let's start by frame title so we create a frame for title okay and uh, we'll use tkinter tkinter dot frame class right to create frame widget and uh, first thing which we need to do is to define the master window for frame which is our root window right uh, we'll come back to give different properties again uh, let's create another frame frame for giving input frame underscore input equal to and we'll just copy paste this and i'll copy paste this again to create output and then management frame so output management frame and one thing which we need to understand over here is these frames are tagged on top of each other and within that frame we have different elements so what we will do we will make use of pack geometry manager to place these frames on top of each other dot title pack frame dot input pack frame underscore output dot pack frame we could have used geomet grid geometry manager also but uh, whatever we have to stick to one a geometry manager for the elements belonging to one master window now at this point let's see what we are able to see on our window um i can see a little white streak if you also can see that's our frames right now because we have not given any width or height or or any element to this these frames that's why we it, they will not appear in any manner which you expect over here and uh, let's place one couple of elements on the first frame okay so if i come to frame underscore title so what i want over here is uh, uh, let's say i'll just write it as create title frame and its elements now here first uh, element we need is label right label uh, why because we need to write that my to do list something like this right so label underscore title now here i'll use tkinter dot label class right like we have been doing and here instead of root as the master window to this label we want it to belong to title frame so we'll give the title frame title is the master window to this label title and the rest is there is usual text is equal to my to do list also we have to notice that whenever we are using any geometry manager let's say we uh, want to use grid we uh, within this frame title for every element we have to stick to grid geometry manager two geometry managers can't go together inside a single master window label underscore title what else we wanted is image so let's just give a give some time while we come back to image because this is a different widget in terms of adding it to tkinter we'll just leave a placeholder and what we will do so let's say add image okay and uh, let's just uh, place this label underscore title using grid geometry manager and we'll give row equal to zero column is equal to zero right so all good let's see what happens we get this my to-do list right so by default my to-do list is in the 
center of the frame and if you see this is the frame and its default color is whatever is the default color of native window and if we want this frame to merge into the current uh, root window we will give it a background color of the same so we will say while defining it bg is equal to root underscore color and we have to give pg is equal to root underscore color to this two okay all right now how about changing the font of this title my to-do list as you can see i have this my to-do list right and right now we are getting this default right so we'll again go to variables section and define our font so let's say we have a title underscore font and we can define it with the help of um tuple so let's say i give times new roman sizes um, um let's say 18 okay and the style is bold um this is where i have defined it and when i want to give this font to my label i'll simply say font equal to whatever is the property name let's run it so my to do list and if you want to have little bit fancy font you can search on internet uh, for the standard fonts and um, what actually i have provided in my style font is seco script and the size is 25 let's keep it a little bit i don't like that much so 23 and style i have given roman style okay and uh, let's see what we get something like this okay perfect so as i said we'll come back to this frame title again to add the image but then we'll be needing one more widget canvas so just park it park it aside and let's move to frame input and add two widgets which we already know one is entry widget right where we can enter the task widget, entry and button widget right once it is created we will have this second part now to add entry widget we know that frame input is the parent to them and we already have done uh, addition of entry widget in the uh, previous uh, lecture so add entry equal to tkinter dot entry class okay and uh, now the master window to this entry widget is frame input we'll also add button so let's name it as add button equal to tkinter dot button and um, in frame input is the master frame for this and button text what we want is equal to add item all right and what else we want we want to call some command equal to something or let's create a dummy function also so let's say i have a function add item and i'll just create it over here in the function section add underscore item i'll just make it pass over here or simply let's say print added item print add item okay so we have this button ready and let's place them them using grid so add underscore entry dot grid now the point to note over here is we have already used label underscore title grid row zero column zero and from our previous understanding our row should be uh, if you want to start move to next uh, row right if this is row 0 then this should be row 1 no we are defining number of rows and columns with respect to the master window it belongs right so our master window which is frame underscore input has changed from uh, frame underscore title and so we'll restart the numbering over here so we'll say grid row is equal to 0 column is equal to 0 and uh, similarly we want to have add button add button and here we have row is equal to now now here in this case their master window is same frame underscore input and so the numbering continues and as we can see they are in the same row so row, row will remain same but the column will change all right let's see 
so we have these guys over here and um, as you can see there is this little wider streak because we have not given any padding that's exactly fitting into the frame input but let's just give uh, some background color to the frame so that it merges into the root right so we'll give beach is equal to root color now let's see perfect and uh, we'll give some padding and eye padding and all that stuff in some time uh, let's add one more variable which adds color to the button and uh, different font style okay so let's do that first so to add button color so that we can have standard button color across you can go and choose on color hunt okay. let's say I have this I gave this hash and hex code of color and uh, uh, let's add button font as well and I'll give a tuple times new Roman Roman and let me have a 12 size okay now let's modify this button you go to button and there we'll give BG equal to our color is button underscore color and font property name with property value is font button underscore font right so we have this let's see perfect so we have this add item so now let's move to next frame where we will be adding list box and scroll bar okay and to add uh, scroll bar and list we have to use respective widgets so let's say I have uh, my scroll bar equal to tkinter dot scroll bar and for them the parent window is frame underscore output similarly for list box we have tkinter dot list box and the master window is frame underscore output so if I want to place this I will use grid geometry manager within frame output this box dot grid row is equal to zero and column is equal to zero and then we have my scroll bar row is equal to zero and column changes to one let's see what we get as an output now So we have this right so by default there is some width and some height and if we want to work with the width and height of this uh, list box we can give width and height properties which we will be giving now and just have a look at this scroll bar which is in this current status right now like this it is just placed in the center of the row 0 column 2 right the default behavior that the that the widget gets placed in the center of the space available to it all right so let's just first work with the width and height and then we will see what we can do with the scroll bar and since we are not giving any padding or pad x or pad y's so there is no space between these uh, components okay so to give width and height to list box we'll use width is equal to let's say I give the width of 80 and height of equal to 8 oops that's too big so let me give width of 40 all right that seems fine to me now how to make this scroll bar go from all the way up to down is using option in the grid geometry manager and which is called sticky which i already explained in my previous lecture and to stretch it from north to south i'll be giving sticky option equal to north south so sticky equal to stretching from all the way to north south right now what is the problem with this scroll bar as I bring it down it just moves upward and there is another thing that this list and scroll bar are not associated in any manner to each other which we will see when we will add item and then we will come back again to 
attach uh, associate these uh, scroll bar and list box with each other so we are done with uh, frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 and now comes a frame 4 which is all about 4 buttons and I hope it should be easy for you to do and try it yourself while I do it in my program so for frame 4 we need these 4 buttons remove item clear save list and quit so let's create frame 4 to create 4 buttons in frame button underscore remove and let's do it quickly tick into button and it's on frame management text is equal to remove and we'll also add uh, font equal to button font color is equal um, bg is equal to button color and command is equal to let's say empty for now and similarly we have we'll add copy paste these and we have clear button to clear everything and then we have save button and then we have quit button okay so to quit the application so instead of remove we will write clear save and quit also we'll place them on the grid button underscore remove dot grid within this frame it will start from row equal to zero column equal to zero right and let's copy paste this again and we have button clear button save and button quit columns are changing row remains same all right also let's just run it so we have these four buttons uh, they don't have any padding or internal padding as of now we can add commands or functions related to them first so i'll go to command function section i'll copy paste the first one so because we are just creating the dummy functions and uh, yeah and we have remove item we have clear function to clear everything and save we won't be creating quit function we'll just address it there itself so let's call this function then we will call clear function and we'll call save function and in case of quit okay we need to exit out of window we'll simply do root dot destroy okay so if I click uh, on any of them um, they will just print something right because they are not supposed to do anything and if I just click on quit it will click it will just exit out, out of application so before we adjust this layout in terms of spacing and all we have one more thing left on the first frame which is image so let's first add the image with the help of new widget which we'll be learning soon it is canvas widget and we'll see how we can place the image on the teak inter window let's do it now image can be added on GUI in various ways all right so depending on what exactly you want it is very straightforward but it can involve different steps too first of all let's see how we can directly add image using teak inter photo image so I am on frame title where we need to add image below title um, my to-do list all right so what I simply can do I have to create first one image using tkinter dot photo image and in photo image I can directly pass 
file property with the path of the file which is an image and right now it is residing in the same directory so i'll simply give logo.png okay and now once this image object is created i can pass directly it to either label or button in the tkinter so let's say i create label underscore img equal to tkinter dot label and where i want to create this label on frame title and instead of passing text property to this label this time we can pass image property okay and what image we need this image object which we have created using a tkinter photo image and i have not used any other module over here right now it's simply photo image functionality from tkinter so let's see if image is created or not no oh yeah i have to place this right label underscore image uh, so label underscore image dot grid and row will change in this case right title uh, images below title so it will be row one and the column remains same column is equal to zero so we have this right now what is the problem with this let's see so right now if i just maximize my interface i can see the image and other items which can be visible in that vicinity right so i definitely need to work upon this image if this image is bigger in size i need to make it small and uh, to work with this image i need a pillow module okay also this photo image from tkinter only works on certain formats png is one of them and then there is another one like ppm it does not work with certain other standard formats like jpeg but right now our requirement is to make this image smaller right and we do not have functionality from photo image to work on this image before we add on add this to tkinter to do this we can take help from pillow module okay so from pil import image and image dk right now this pillow module is not a standard um, module in python built in it is not a built in module and you need to install it you can install it through pip or you can install it through file settings project interpreter i'm talking about pycharm and if i search for pillow over here right i can just add it otherwise you can simply install it through pip uh, in your environment right so once you have pillow module you can import these modules again from this image and image dk now how to make our image better let's go to image title again here we are using tkinter photo image now instead of this let's first make our image smaller so i'll create another image underscore one equal to and this time i'll use image dot open method first to open the image by passing the path of the image right so this image functionality or image class is coming from pillow right now once i have opened the image i can resize it using dot resize or dot thumbnail because i just want to make a thumbnail out of the image i'll just pass thumbnail method from um, pillow to this image object and i can pass the size of the thumbnail i want let's say i uh, and that size can be passed in the form of tuple so let's say if i pass 100 100 what does that mean this 100 100 means that i'm passing the maximum allowed size of 100 by 100 pixels to the image logo.png but it is not necessary that it will create the size of 100 by 100 it will 
in order to preserve the aspect ratio it will just make the size as much as which is possible within this maximum size okay and we do not need to save this it will just work on the image and modify the current object now instead of using tkinter dot photo image we will use pillow modules photo image method using image tk okay so photo image belonging to image tk we will use that and there will simply pass this image one which we have worked upon we can directly pass this or resized image and uh, the rest of the things remain same so let's see how the does this help now so we have other things same label is created and image is placed on the label and label is placed on the grid all right better now the there is one more point over here in case we want to modify this right i imported i imported a transparent image but by default when i add it to tkinter i get a white background in case i want to make this image transparent what i have to actually do i have to make use of canvas widget from tkinter okay so what is canvas widget so canvas is a very wonderful widget in tkinter where which can help us to draw or place graphics or text on it right so i'll make use of that first i will create canvas and then i'll place the image using canvas.create image method so these things remain same right so let's see what else we have to do we definitely don't need this uh, label image what we need is we have used below module we have opened the image we have modified the image and uh, in case you don't need to modify the image you don't need this as well so first let's create a canvas widget canvas is equal to tkinter dot canvas i just comment this out for now tkinter dot canvas and again i have to specify the master window over here right so master window is frame title and if i don't provide any width and height what will happen in this case let's see it will i have to place it first so canvas dot grid same thing as the label image row is equal to one and column is equal to zero let's run it so by default it will occupy the size it is av available to it in terms of width and height and we can provide width let's say 100 and height equal to 100 so we have a canvas ready okay and we can place anything we can draw line or circle or we can place your image or text on this uh, canvas okay so right now what we need we need to place our uh, logo.png on this so what we can do we can use canvas dot create image method and here are two things in this which we have to pass one where we want to place the image in terms of x y coordinate and what is our image so let's just pass zero zero and then we will understand the location and here we have to pass this keyword argument image is equal to and what is image our right our image is image underscore one okay okay i um oh, all right i think i need this actually i need to convert this into image so once i have converted i have opened the image modified it then i need to use photo image method to convert into tkinter compatible format and then i'll just pass this image over here all i don't need is i am not placing it on a label i'm placing it on a canvas so we have this now what happened why this is sticking in this leftmost corner so what does this zero zero mean zero zero means like we are creating a canvas of particular size let's say 100 by 100 and i have this image in the extreme left corner because this is this canvas um, coordinates start from zero zero and like x goes in this direction so it goes from zero to hundred in y direction zero to hundred 
so what if we want to place the image in the center of the canvas we have to basically do come from here and here so right so this is 50 50 so let's try 50 50 50 50 now what happened to our original problem right where the background was still white so to avoid that issue we can simply give background color to canvas and in this image will have a merged background so what does that mean so while creating canvas we can provide bg is equal to whatever is our uh, master window color let's see perfect now what is this something which is a surrounding there right this is one property of canvas which is called highlight thickness right name is quite long i know so it is by default one and if we want to make it zero we have to uh, give it while creating canvas highlight thickness i know it's confusing i hope it works so highlight thickness is zero by default it is one okay so it is gone now let's just give highlight thickness as one right now and uh, we'll make it zero next time so right now we are able to add image on take inter and that's the way we add images on interface right and uh, next thing which we clearly need to work upon is these paddings right providing spaces between these widgets they are sticking to each other so why not let's start with the frames right so let's just give padding to all the frames and uh, i will go to this um, frame here right so i'll just give equal padding in horizontal direction to all the frames okay what else we want we want to have a gap between these frames right they're sticking so we want pad y between the frames so i'll give pad y so you can just change these values depending on what you look feel is looking better okay so pad y equals to 10 better now what else we want is the space between these buttons within the frame right so let's go to this frame frame management right and we need pad x between these buttons so let's give five okay better but we have not given the frame background color it seems so we should give frame background color to this management frame so i'll give bg is equal to root color okay now we want to make give space inside these buttons as well right we want to give the space so for that we'll make use of ipad x and if you want ipad y too so let's go to these buttons ipad x is equal to let's say five so that is i i for internal padding and for clear button i'll just give eight because of the text which is smaller i want to make button looking in equal in size so just giving slightly higher eye padding okay let's run this okay what else or uh, similarly we can give pad x over here and i padding in this let's give it so i'll go to this one i okay pad x is equal to five pad x is equal to five and then it needs i padding also i pad x is equal to um, let's say 10 no 10 is too much five okay all right how about making this window slightly bigger right so first let's do this one by one first let's give some width to entry while we create it so width 
is equal to 25 and also let's give font to the to this we have already defined button font i'll just give button font to it okay this is slightly bigger than this so let me just increase the size of this text box list box so i'll make it 45 okay seems fine to me and now i can remove highlighted thickness um i mean i can make it zero right by default it is one so i'll make it zero okay so that's how our interface is looking right now and i think it is pretty ready and we can always do some or the other modifications but i think it's doable now and what we need to do is make these buttons functional right now they are doing nothing just printing something okay and uh, what we need to do is we need to make them functional like if i add any item over here it should add that here in the list so let's start one by one to add functionalities to these buttons. Quit button is anyways already taken care of by using this root.destroy method. So we'll start with the add item where what we want is we want to get the value from this entry field. And when we click on add item, uh, that value it's fetched and added somewhere in the list box. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. First of all, we'll get the value from the entry field. So let's say we have a value variable and equal to and uh, our entry field is add underscore entry dot get. Okay. And uh, when we're clicking on add item, this function add item is called. So definitely we can print this for now. Print value. Let's quickly see. If we are able to successfully fetch the value so add item and it prints this value right so we are able to fetch the value from uh, the entry field so the next thing is we have to add this value in the list box widget okay so we'll first get list box to add any value in the list box widget we need insert method and in insert method we need to pass two things okay one is the index and the other is element so let's say if i say insert at the index zero the value let's say whatever okay so we want to pass this value okay whatever value we are adding we want to insert that at index zero so let's say if i click on this and i enter anything add item i enter anything add item and if you will see that these values are added at the index 0 right because I specified index 0 I might want to have new values added at the end rather than at the 0 index there can be 1 2 3 index as well so if I enter 1 the value will get added after first elements because the count index counting here is starting from 0 so this is 0 1 2 3 okay so if i modify to 1 the elements will start from will add add at one index which is a second position now in general i may want it at the end right but i do not know what would be the uh, index of the ma my last element right and there is a special constant in tkinter which takes care of the point after the last value existing value and it indicates the index of the index next to the last value okay so let's see how we can make use of that either we can directly say end over here okay and you see if i click add anything over here it gets automatically added the end or i may want to use the constant okay and these constants are uh, available in tkinter so from tkinter i import and uh, okay and uh, i can directly pass this end so this end will always indicate the end of the list box so uh, if i enter anything over here it will always get added added at the end all right 
So let's notice one more thing over here uh, while we complete add item. So if I enter some task, right, this entry is not getting deleted. Either I have to manually delete it and if I forget about it, I can add append this thing like that, right? So basically what I want, I want it to be deleted once the task is added in the list box and that's simple. Once it is inserted, we have to go to add entry and give it a delete command and as you can see delete command needs two things first and last what does that mean it needs index of first index and the last index from where to where it we want to delete the characters right so if i pass let's say from character one comma three okay and uh, and i say eating and I say add so what it will do it will pick the first uh, second character actually right a right it picked the second character because the counting starts from zero so the first index means second character and goes all the way till the third index which is the fourth character right and it's delete that so eventually what we want to delete we want to delete from zero till the end so if I run this, done, okay. So we are done with the add item finally and uh, let's move to the next function which is remove item and with the help of remove item we should be able to remove the element which we select, right. So when I select an element in the list box and I, I click on remove button, I should be able to remove this item, selected item, okay. So to remove the element from the list item we need to have two things first we need to identify what is selected okay in the list box list box dot let's see first method curve selection x is equal to this and print x okay so if I run this and um, I do some uh, remove button and I click on remove button um, after selecting eat I click on remove button um, it will give me the index okay uh, of the element which is selected let's see it again eat run fun okay and I select run what is an index of the run it is one if I click on remove it is supposed to give me double and along with the index of the selected element so if you want to delete any entry okay from list box first of all we have to give delete command and what we want to delete is we have to give the element which we have selected over here right we want to delete the element which is selected and if I give X let's say over here eat run fun and I click on remove so it removes the element from that index this is one way using curve selection method now if I directly uh, uh, tkinter also gives us the direct way to identify the selected item right and that is using anchor constant so simple what whatever is selected is stored in anchor and we have to tell that when re remove button is clicked um, uh, just delete the anchor which is basically indicating the value which is selected eat run fun okay and I click on remove so it is done so uh, that makes our remove item also complete so we are done with add item we are done with remove item okay let's talk about the third function which is clear function and what clear is supposed to do when i click on let's say i have some functions and um, i have some items and when i clear on click on clear i am supposed to clear this whole list box that is in one go we are deleting all the items of the list box okay so how can we make that work it's again very simple so it is list box list box 
dot delete it's sim similar to that entry thing right where we have to indicate the index and from which index to which index we want to delete the element we want to delete it from zero index to end and you can notice that we can delete a couple of items instead of all if we want using um, this uh, delete function in the list box so if I click on clear all the items are complete we cleared out so that's that completes our clear functionality as well now I want to indicate one thing before we move to save functionality right so if I add many elements over here you see this scroll bar is from the beginning till the end the same and even if I try to scroll my elements it's not helping me although I can scroll it with the help of my mouse but I'm not able to make use of this scroll bar right why let's have a look at when we created these list box and um, scroll bar we simply created these widgets and then we simply place them right next to each other but we didn't tell them they were made for each other right so we have to associate these list box with the scroll bar and to do that we have two steps Config configuring list box to tell list box that the scroll bar is there and configuring scroll bar to tell list box is there right so let's do that so let's have a look at these elements again if what is basically scroll bar scroll bar is an independent widget which can help our widgets like list box or canvas or some text widgets to scroll through the areas and view the areas which are not visible because of the large size of the items in that widget okay and so we independently create these two widgets the one which is to be controlled by the scroll bar and the scroll bar right and both needs to be tell that this scroll bar needs to control which widget so scroll bar needs to be informed about the widget which needs to be controlled and in what direction and uh, then this widget which is getting control needs to be told that which is scroll bar it is communicating to okay which control which is scroll bar is controlling it so there are two parts so we have to configure two pro property a property in each of the widgets so let's do that so I created scroll bar and list box right and then I place them the grid perfect I could have placed it in at the bottom of the list box as well if I needed to have scroll in the direction of X but right now we need it in the Y direction so configured let's configure them one by one so first I will do list box dot config at the same time I can also do my scroll bar dot config right now we have to add a property to each the widget to be controlled property which is to be written um, which is to be updated is y scroll command okay and we have to set it equal to whatever is my scroll bar dot set this widget is now controlled by this scroll bar now this needs to communicate it to this scroll bar as well so I'll give command so whenever this scroll event happens what it should do it so should control this list box in Y view okay there can be Y view or X view so in what manner it needs to be controlled let's see if it works now so if I run eat I add many items over here now you see the scroll bar size is changing based on the number of uh, elements in the list box right so Y view is changing according to the number of items now we can also when we do scroll event right my Y view is varying when the scroll event is happening and that is the part of command so that is how we can associate a widget to a scroll bar widget you can associate canvas or any other relevant widget in the same manner so this is how we associated list box right now we are left with the last part of this program uh, right and uh, that is the save functionality so far like when we 
have been adding so many things right and the next um, imagine if you add so many tasks on your list and when you open this list it is no the tasks are no more there right why because you are not saving them anywhere and to save them we can save them in any file or maybe uh, some database or maybe some csv file maybe some text file right so we'll start with the very simplest case which is saving the data in a text file all we want is when i click on save this data gets saved to some text file and when i reopen my to do list this task appear as it is all right so let's do that to save this uh, task list which we can create using add item um, uh, we need a text file right and uh, also we expect that when we open um, back this task list we this application should read from that text file right in which it wrote the data so before we create a function to write read and write from text file through this list box let's have a sneak peek into how reading writing works in the text file so let's first create a text file in the pycharm and i'll just copy some text and go to pycharm i'll right click this directory new file and let's have a file abc.txt and uh, txt okay and uh, let's paste the content in it I'll just optimize it a little bit so yep so you can see there are line numbers as well so each data is in different line okay let's just delete extra lines all right so we have this data in this abc.txt file and how about reading this data from this file through python so if i do new python file read write okay that, that's just for the demo purpose it has nothing to do with this our main tkinter application so i want to read the data from this apc.txt so how i will do i will make use of with a statement right with open right so i'll open the file which file i want to open i'll give the path since the file is in the same folder and then i'll give the mode in which i want to open i can open it in read mode write mode append mode by default if i don't get give anything it's in read mode but let's just give a read mode over here and then i'll create a file handle okay i can give it any name and through this file handle i'll read the data uh, through different methods okay content variable and file handle now i can uh, use read method to read the data string read line to read a single line one by one and read lines to read all the lines in one go and each line goes as a list element okay and when the cursor st uh, when the program starts in the very beginning the file um, handle is at the initial position of the file okay so let me just put it in read lines so that i can fetch the data in a list so read lines and let's say i want to print this data so the our usual method of going through a list for line in content is at list right and um, for line in let me also show you print content first comment it out for some time i'll just run it you see what i said like read lines prints the data in a text file and if you see there is each line is preceded by slash n and so this is each element why there is slash n over there because each line is starting from the new line so there is a new line character at the end of each line okay and uh, each of these elements with new line character in the string gets uh, in a list okay and right now our list name is content and if i have to read line wise or i have to do something with this each line i will just do using a for loop and for line in content i just print line for now okay and 
that's print that print sets right so uh, line slash n character nine slash n character and we get the output if this file does not exist right i'll get an error let's say instead of abc.txt i'll give a file name of non-existing file what will happen i'll get an error right file not found and i can in order to not get this error and keep on my program going if there is a there are further lines to that i'll add a try try except block right try and indent and i'll just accept this particular error because i know what error i'm going to receive and right now i'll not take any action when this error is received so i'll just pass but what will happen whatever if there is any further lines in the code uh, my program will not get stopped at this point of error it will keep on running so if i run this nothing happens so if i have some print hello at this point i'll get hello right and pardon me if you already know this and you are waiting to get it uh, applied in tkinter you can directly move to that marker and uh, i'm assuming that you're a beginner and you don't know i'm just explaining this reading writing text file okay so let's also understand how to write a data okay it's very much similar to how we read it with um, open and let's say we open a file okay new.txt and let's assume it is not existing and we open it in a write mode and uh, let's say we have a content is equal to um anu john ratio um rahul okay so something like this right and i want to write this content I'll, uh, I have to use it, open it as a file handle first, and then it will begin from the beginning of the file. F dot write is the method. Okay, there are uh, other methods too, like write lines, but we'll do simply write method to write the string content. And uh, when we run this, what will happen? You can see that there is this file which was not existing got created and uh, it gets this content now how about this file is existing what will happen let me add slash and character just to identify the content has changed so if i run it again this new.txt will get overridden okay this over this content will get overwritten by the existing content in the program okay so that is how read and write basically works and all we have to do now instead of for this um, content string which we have been defining to write the content what we'll do we'll fetch the data from the list box uh, write it in the text file and then further to that when we open it we'll just fetch the data which is existing in the already written file all right so let's go ahead so let me just first delete these extra files from here okay and uh, what we have to do we have to fetch the data from list box when save button is clicked so list underscore box dot get and as we can see we have to give two arguments over here first and last so from where to where we want to fetch the data from zero till end right we want to fetch the data so let's just print it first okay uh, let's save it uh, x is equal to and i'll just print x and let's see what we get actually okay so i'll run it eat run okay and i click on save button and uh, what we get as a print is a tuple okay all the elements are printed as an element of tuple that's clear right now what we have to do we have to write them in task list.txt let's say that file is not existing initially add each element what we have to do first of all we have to open the file right remember in write mode 
let's name the file as task list dot txt and we want to open it in write mode and we'll open a file handle and then we have to write what do we have to write this x right so for uh, for let's say item in x we have to write this item f dot write item right done so let's see if it works so we added eat run fun okay and i click on save and uh, do we have task list txt created yes we do have and now what why we are getting each and everything in a single line because we have not added a new line character right so let's add new line character too so i'll say item plus slash n all right um okay so let's see what happens if i run this run eat fun okay and um, i click on save let's see so we have this we do have this additional new line character we'll just see the way to escape that but let's also see one more thing so we uh, if we run this again the data is still not appearing right we still it, it is saved but it is not appearing over here why because we are not reading it back we are just saving it we are not reading it back so we need to read it back right so to read it back we have to have one more function df open when we open a file right open list okay open app maybe so when we are opening that we are reading it so we'll continue with with open um, we want to open the same file right but in read mode as f and we want to just read it back in the task uh, list box right we carry the content in a variable content is equal to f dot read uh, let's say read lines okay read lines and uh, let's print content first now when we uh, we are not calling the function right we are have not called this function when we were going to call this function when whenever we run the program then we want to call this function so what we will do we'll simply call this function before the main loop runs right and we'll call it with the parentheses right now when we are calling this function um, this function will go to this uh, open this task list of txt in read mode and then we'll read and it is right now supposed to print okay so if there is nothing right now but there is definitely in task list dot txt so we get this printed over here right but how to get it back on the one more thing before we update it uh, suppose uh, we open it at the time this uh, file is not existing right we'll get an error right same error and what we have to do as we did earlier we have to insert this in try block accept and we have to take care of this error actually we don't want to do anything but we just don't want any error right if this file is not existing we don't want anything on task list or in list box but we don't want any error either so that is why we are just passing so it opens after this let's also add first uh, instead of printing let's add it to list box to add it to list box we will run the for loop right for uh, item in content right and for item in content we'll just insert it in list box list box dot insert list box dot insert item and where we want to insert the item we'll insert the item at the zero index 
uh, let me just delete it first okay run uh, so if I do eat run play okay and I save it I close it and I open it again so I have play run eat I added eat run play and it give me uh, play run eat why let's see the task list when we are saving it right first item gets saved on first line second item on second line and like that but when we are adding it it is adding getting added in the reverse order so let's add the items in the same order so if i open it again i'll get it in the same order so let's add one more item to it sleep okay so if i save it and i open it we can see that one more new line of character is added right why when it, we are saving it again what is happening that there is already new line character right in the item and if we are saving it again and again it will add one more new line character to the existing items so what we have to do we have to put just some if over here right what we have to validate that if this already has a new line character right if already there is a new line character in this string we don't have to add new line character in that case otherwise and we'll add it normally so what we have to say if uh, here if item dot ends with slash n then simply f dot write item else f dot write item plus slash n okay so let's see if that works so we have eat run play sleep and uh, i add something else let's say fun add item i save it and i quit it and let me open it again so i have perfectly placed items so i guess we are done with this long long program i know i have taken more than long time because i dived into each and every concept assuming that people who are going through this program are not aware of those tasks related to the kinder or reading text file right but if you are aware definitely you can skip the part of understanding of that concept and move further eventually we have my to-do list completed and the source code is available on the blog on my website learningmilestone.com and i'll be updating or adding these kinds of tutorials so stay subscribed to my channel and i'll see you in next tutorial